Hello friends, welcome to my channel Quality Magnify India. Earlier I usually post my videos and my slides which is mostly content English but with some local language Hindi also. But I got a lot of requests from the subscribers, from the viewers that they need in English because not all people understand Hindi. So I have decided to continue my channel with full English for all the viewers so that all of the viewers can access to this channel and understand clearly and can benefit it from the channel. So friends, let's start with API 510. We are continuing with API 510 and we have, con we have completed a, a few of the chapters and today we will go for the chapter number 7. There is another one chapter will come chapter number 8 that is the final chapter. After that we will go for a calculation slide in which all the mathematical calculations will do it. So for the chapter number 7 we will read it today in part 6 which is which covers inspection data evaluation analysis and recording. This will uh, contain some of the calculations like corrosion rate, remaining life, all these things. I will overly explain to you but as I told you the exact calculations and everything will cover in another one slide and I will describe about all these mathematical calculations so it will be very clear for you. So friends let's start with API training course part 6 which covers uh, the inspection data evaluation analysis and recording okay so one what is inspection data evaluation corrosion rate of thinning damage mechanism is determined by the difference between two thickness readings divided by the time interval between the readings okay i will make it simple you put a pressure vessel on service when you put the pressure vessel on the service you found the metal, the base metal thickness of, uh, of SL plate was 20 mm. After 5 years, you find that it is it became 15 mm. So in 5 years, it lose 5 mm. So every year, it lose 1 mm. So this 1 mm is the corrosion rate. Corrosion rate is 1 mm per year. Based on that corrosion rate, we found the remaining life. How we find the remaining life? Based on the corrosion rate. If 1 mm is corroded, then there is still 15 mm uh, balance. So within 15 years, all will be damaged. Okay. So before that safe limit, we have to repair. We have to uh, do a uh, 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 alternation or re-rating, which will read on the next chapter. Okay. To that pressure vessel in order to save is in order to extend his life or in order to save the pressure vessels. So the determination of corrosion rate may include thickness data collected for more than two different times. Okay, we will don't take uh, from we will read uh, the uh, uh, area from where uh, we have to take the uh, CML. There is a CML condition monitoring location where from where we will take the readings and how many readings is required. Okay, because if we we'll take the correct readings, if we we'll collect the uh, frequency of readings then only you can evaluate the corrosion rate properly to evaluate the corrosion rate you need to evaluate you need to uh, take the data uh, properly okay then only you can get a uh, correct uh, corrosion rate and remaining life so what it is saying the determination of corrosion rate may include thickness data collect, uh, collected at more than two different times suitable use of short term versus long term corrosion rates shall be determined by the inspector who will decide the short term and long term short term and long term is only in pressure vessels okay so short term and long term who will do this one inspector will do this one short term corrosion rates are typically determined the two most recent thickness readings in APA 653 if we we'll do go for APA 653 there is no short term and long term okay there is only one but here in pressure vessel we have short term and long term corrosion rates are typically determined by the two most recent thickness readings whereas long term rates are the most recent readings and one taken earlier in the life of equipment okay I will come for the formula and it will be very clear no need to be confused corrosion rate long term long term corrosion rate is what T initial okay T initial means when the vessel was installed T initial let's say the vessel was installed in 2000 and now it is 2022 so T initial is 2000 and T actual is 2022 
let's say in 2000 it is 20 mm so t initial is 20 mm and t actual is now let's say it is 10 mm so 20 mm minus 10 mm so time in between uh, no, 2022 to 2000 it is 22 years so you have to divide t initial let's say t initial when we install it is 20 mm and when t actual now if we find it it is 10 mm and the year between T initial and T actual is 2022 uh, and 2000 uh, we have to install so it is 22 years so we have to divide it like that 22 by 20 by 10 is equal to 10 10 by 22 is equal to whatever the uh, value will come so that is called corrosion rate for long term okay and what is short term T previous T previous means let's say the another one inspection was done in 2010 okay the vessel was inst installed in uh, uh, 2000 but another one inspection was done in 2010 at that time 2010 what is the t previous it is 15 mm let's say okay and t initial it is how much not 10 10 mm okay and when we did the uh, uh, time interval the t previous was 2000 2010 and t actual is 2022 so 22 minus 10 is called 12 years so this is the formula it is very simple formula which you have to remember as i told you i will do a mathematical slide in which everything will be clear so t initial is the initial thickness of the same as cml or t actual t actual is the actual thickness of cml condition cml means condition monitoring locations wherever we do the testing that is called condition monitoring locations okay and t previous the previous thickness measured during the prior inspection when evaluating corrosion rate as part of the data assessment, the inspector in consultation with the corrosion specialist is a must question in closed book exam. Okay. When you go for corrosion rate, you have to contact the corrosion specialist. Shall so select the corrosion of the uh, corrosion rate that best reflect the current condition. The following should be considered when evaluating what corrosion rate should be used in a corroded area for calculating remaining life. So these are the requirements to find out when you will go to evaluate the calculation of remaining life for a corroded area newly installed pressure vessels or change in service okay for a new vessel or a vessel for which service condition are being changed one of the following methods shall be used to determine the vessel probable corrosion rate okay the remaining life of inspection interval can be estimated from this rate how you will find out the remaining life the corrosion rate may be calculated from data collected by the owner and user a corrosion rate may be estimated by a corrosion specialist. A corrosion rate may be estimated from published data on vessel in same or similar service. If the probable corrosion rate cannot be determined any of the above, an on-stream determination shall be made by approximate 3 to 6 months of service by using suitable corrosion monitoring devices or actual thickness measurement of the vessels. How we will calculate, how we will uh, uh, evaluate the uh, corrosion rate for the newly constructed pressure vessels and change in service these are the requirements it is mentioned here remaining life calculations we already found the corrosion rate once you get the corrosion rate remaining life can be done by t actual minus t required let's say t actual is 15 mm okay now the 15 mm thickness is required but t required as per the design 10 mm minimum thickness is required and corrosion rate let's say it is for uh, it happens let's say 0.5 mm per year so 5 m so this is 5 mm minus 0 0.5 so 10 years okay so 5 divided by 0 0.5 you can do it will do so you'll find it 10 years so the remaining life is 10 years so this is a simple calculation okay you will find the corrosion rate we find the corrosion rate by uh, last slides okay we found the corrosion rate by long term and short term how we did it t actual t previous t initial for long term we usually use t actual okay how much this one and t initial for short term we use t previous not t initial short term always remember it is t previous so by that short term and long term we find out and when we get the when we get the uh, um, uh, when we get the corrosion rate by that corrosion rate we find out how much uh, t actual is uh, there and how much t required then we divide it by corrosion rate we find the remaining life okay that's what it is mentioned here 
So maximum allowable working pressure determines. This is a question usually it comes. Okay, this is open book question. All other what we taught, uh, taught uh, last slides, this will also come as a open book. The maximum allowable working pressure for continued use of pressure vessels shall be based on comp computation that are determined using the latest applicable edition of the SME code or the construction code of which pressure vessel was built. Okay. The actual thickness is determined by the inspection minus twice the estimated corrosion loss before the date of next inspection can be defined from here. So this is called here I mentioned the actual is the uh, actual thickness of CML condition monitoring location. I internal is the interval of next uh, next uh, internal or on stream inspection and C rate is the governing corrosion rate. So what they will do? What is the wall thickness? Okay. What is the wall thickness is required in a corrosive services? This is the formula. What is the minimum wall thickness required? This is the formula and these factors are given in the question and you have to find out what is the minimum wall thickness required. Multiple thickness measurements shall be taken when the actual thickness determined the inspection of the component is greater or lesser than the thickness. This is important. Reported in the material test report of the manufactured data. Especially if the component was made from a forming process. Why it is saying forming process? Because if it is forming process, then the thickness will change. It will not come a proper thickness. If by rolling or by pressing, if it is done, let's say the pressure vessel cell was made by forming process, then the thickness will vary. Okay. The thickness measurement procedure shall be approved by the inspector. Allowance shall be made for other loads in accordance with the applicable provision of ASME code. FFS analysis for corroded regions. Okay, the actual thickness and maximum corrosion rate for any part of the vessel can be adjusted uh, adjusted at any inspection covering the following. This is a must question. Must question. It come in close book. Okay. Evaluation of locally thinned areas. How will you evaluate the local thin areas? The vessel with inside dia less than 60 inch, one half of the vessel should be considered. Okay. Whichever is less, 20 inch or 50 centimeter, which is less. For vessel inside dia greater than 60 inch, one third of the vessel dia or 40 inch. This is a must question. Okay, they will give they will give you uh, the vessel diameter is uh, 80 inch. Okay, then uh, what is uh, what is what should be the evolution for the local thin areas? You have to find out. If it is more than 60 inch, then one third. Okay, let's say it is 90. Okay, let's say it is 90 inch. So one third means 30 inch or 40 inch, whichever is less. So you have to consider 30 inch. Okay, this question is must. You, you will find in the question in the exam. Okay, this is a uh, open book or closed book. Both can be expected. Along the designated length, the thickness reading should be equally spaced. The area of considerable size along with lines of corroded area may have the ability to determine which length has the lowest average thickness. The following criteria must be met in order to use thickness averaging. The region metal loss has relatively smooth counter without notches. The equipment does not operate in the creep range. The component is not in a cyclic uh, service. A minimum of 15 thickness readings should be included in the data set. Minimum reading must be. These are the requirements which you have to follow. Okay. You have to remember all this. There is less possibility, but you can get one or two questions. Okay. Evaluation of the pitting. This is a must question. For the closed book okay during the current inspection wildly scattered pits may be ignored as long as the following are true the remaining thickness below the pit is greater than one half of the required thickness or half half t as required the total area of the pitting that is deeper than the corrosion allowance does not exceed seven in square 45 cm square within any eight inch diameter circle or the sum of pit diameter that is deeper than the corrosion allowance along any straight Line does not exceed 2 inch. Okay, this is a question. How we can do the evaluation of fittings? Joint e efficiency adjustment. That is also one of the question. Usually it comes. Okay, what should be? It should be less than 1 inch. Okay, when the vessel surface away from the weld is corroded and the joint efficiency less than 1 inch, an independent calculation using the appropriate weld joint efficiency can be made. Okay, this can be a closed book question. For this calculation, the surface at the weld includes 1 inch on either side of the weld or twice the required thickness of the either side of the weld, whichever is greater. This is many times this oh, closed book questions came in exam. 
So corroded areas in basal heads. Okay, what are the inspections you have to do for the corroded areas in basal heads? The required thickness of corroded areas in ellipsoidal and torospherical heads. These are the open book calculations. I will do this one in the next slide. How to calculate the required thickness for ellipsoidal heads, for the hemispherical heads, for the torospherical heads. And this is a must question. You will find for corroded areas in basal heads, you will find this chapter 3 to 4 questions, open book and close book, 100%. You will find for the calculation and this calculation will come in my slide. Uh, after I complete the chapter, right, I will make another one slide and these calculations will cover on that slide and we will discuss. But we can uh, talk about this one. This, this is a question. Okay. This question is important. For ellipsoidal heads, the radius to use the hemispherical head formula shall be equivalent spherical radius K1D. Okay, this is important. And D by 2H is equal to 2. This is also important. Where D is the cell diameter and K1 is given in 7.1. There is a chart. We'll read we'll read that chart. Okay. In table 7.1, H is one up of the length of the minor axis, equal to the inside depth of the ellipsoidal head measured from the tangent line. Okay. Required thickness determinations. The required thickness shall be based on pressure, mechanical and structural consideration using the appropriate design formula and code allowable stress. That is right. Always we do the th thickness requirement based on the pressure, mechanical and structural consideration using the appropriate uh, design formula. So evaluation of existing equipment with minimal documentations. For pressure vessels we, uh, that have no template or minimal or no design and construction documentations, the following steps may be used to verify operating integrity. Okay. So what are the documents we will read in the next uh, next uh, slide. So this is the slide for reports and records. How we have to maintain the reports and records. Pressure vessel owners and users will maintain permanent and progressive records. Okay. That is important. Of their pressure vessels and pressure living devices. A permanent record will be maintained throughout the service. This is a question. You will find this question in api 510 mostly they ask up to what time 5 year 10 year 20 year throughout the service life okay so permanent record will be maintained throughout each equipment uh, items progressive records uh, will be regularly updated to include new information uh, um, pertain to the inspection and maintenance history of the vessel and pressure relief devices as well as operating information that may affect equipment integrity Pressure vessel and pressure relieving devices records will contain four type of information that is important. What are the four type of information? This is sometimes it comes in exam. Okay. So construction and design information must be there. Inspection history must be there. Repair, alternation and relating information must be there. And FFS assessment documentation, fitness for service assessment documents should be there. So this is all about the inspection, data evaluation, analysis and recording. There are more calculations and few close book questions will come. Calculations will read on the next to next chapter. Okay. And the close book exams, as I told you, you have to read it very carefully. Okay. And you have to make a note. So thank you very much for watching my video. I hope you like my video. And if you like it, you comment with uh, comment uh, with my videos if you have any doubt and share with your friends and subscribe to my channels and uh, share with your friends for uh, adding more subscriptions so as i told we have completed the chapter 7 of api 510 up to inspection data evaluation analysis and recording so next chapter will read repair alternation and rewriting of pressure vessel and pressure relieving devices so that will be the last chapter for api 510 and after that we will move on for the mathematical calculations all mathematical calculations related to api 510 we will read on uh, after we complete the chapter 8 okay thank you friends thank you very much for watching i appreciate your time